Hi, everyone. Welcome back to Hearts of Heart Astrology Podcast. My name is Adriana, and I'm joined here with Caitlin. We are granddaughter and grandmother joined together to share our perspective, uh, our hearts of heart perspectives on the coming astrology and the energy that's going on in our lives. So I'm based in the UK. Um, just to give you a little bit of background, I've been an intuitive tarot reader for over four years now, and now I am a galactic astrologer and a past life reader. I'm Caitlin, and I've been doing this way too long, <laughs> 27 years, uh, not astrology, but uh, healing work and metaphysical, etc. cetera. Um, I could even go back farther than that with uh, yoga and just all the metaphysical. And uh, so happy to be here with my beautiful granddaughter. We have so much fun doing this. Oh, with <laughs> my beautiful grandmother, too. <laughs> we're we're uh, sharing a lot of love today. We got a lot of love things on the horizon coming up. If you do enjoy uh, what you see today, please do like this video and comment down below and subscribe to our YouTube channels. Uh, grab a cup of tea or coffee with us and listen in to what we have to share. Today, we will be talking about the very infamous Mercury retrograde aligning with fixed star Regulus. This is happening August 5th, um, or even in the earlier hours of August 4th, kind of going along with that new moon happening as well. And we will be giving some general horoscopes later on, so stay tuned for that. The new moon is firstly occurring a few hours before Mercury retrograde begins um, at 12.12. .12. UK time or 7 12 p.m. Eastern time for the United States and is in the sign of Leo the Lion. We have a lot of lion energy going on around this time, including with Regulus. Regulus is a fixed star that is in the Leo constellation lining up with Venus, which Mercury is making a conjunction to. So Mercury retrograde officially begins at 11.56 p.m. Eastern Time for the United States, or in the early morning hours of 5.56 a.m. August 5th for the UK. It's in Virgo at four degrees. And uh, Virgos, I will say, you guys are probably gonna be feeling this retrograde the most. <laughs> mm -hmm. So get, get yourselves ready. <laughs> Mercury retrograde uh, is lining up with the very detail-oriented sign of Virgo, which amplifies the very meticulous energy in our daily lives, urging us to read between the lines and that expression, cross your T's and dot your I's. It is a very good time for getting organized, so that can be the positive thing with Mercury Retrograde. Rather than making any important decisions, it's a great time to plan and get organized. If you are new to what Mercury Retrograde entails, um, it does bring miscommunications mainly. That is one of the biggest things or communication issues in general, including through technology and social media I've seen. This can also bring travel delays, uh, whether by car, plane, or any vehicle, really. I've heard people, you know, during retrogrades, their car, something happens to it. So Hopefully, you know, that's not the case for everybody, but it can happen. So I do encourage people, if it can be helped to try not to travel during this time um, or just take extra care uh, and just kind of expect some delays to happen, maybe even extra traffic when you're out on the road. Mm -hmm. So it's also not a good time to send it, sign any long-term contracts. So try to do this after this period is over. It is lasting for pretty much the full month of August. We do go into the shadow period into September, which lasts two weeks after. Do you remember what that exact date was by any chance, Caitlin? September 11th, the Perfect. end of okay. post shadow. What a date to end on. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, well, there you go. So I've also found too, even with my own clients through my tarot readings and other readings I've done, uh, I hear it all the time. Their ex is coming back out of the woodwork. So <laughs> you can expect that to happen too. you know, trying to get back together with you or messages online. 
Uh, mm -hmm. I think this will happen even more so at this time because Mercury is right next to Venus, the goddess of love. So don't be surprised if your ex-partner does try to get back with you this month. <laughs> so watch out for that. <laughs> Talk a little bit more about fixed star Regulus in the Leo constellation. So it lines up with Mercury and Venus here. Regulus is known as the heart of the lion and actually comprises of four stars that look as one. This star and the Leo constellation itself give a very regal energy. Okay, so here it is. Um, so yes, Mercury and Venus are over here. It's just really crammed into that first house here. This is the chart for um, England with London. So it might be a little bit off um, in the United States or other places. So keep that in mind, but it is lining up with fixed star Regulus there. And the new moon was right here. We just got the ascendant kind of smushed in the middle there a few hours back the day before. So a little bit of predictive astrology on my part here that I'd like to kind of tap into with my intuition. I am intuitively feeling like we will hear things from nobility or those types of people who have more power, perhaps even the royal family, who knows, <laughs> during this time. I do think it can bring news on maybe their relationships amongst these people or even forecast a changing of power. Because do keep in mind, Saturn is, after all, still in retrograde as well, which deals with governments and uh, people in power. So definitely more likelihood of those things happening and the United States coming up to elections and things like that, too. We've already seen lots of changes going on there. We may see a lot more public speaking as well from more uh, important or well, quote unquote important or higher up individuals. Uh, on a personal level, I feel this will bring a sense of empowerment and strength. Uh, like the strength tarot card, which I do want to just quickly show. That's the strength tarot card here. It's like taming of the lion here. Or in this case, it's a tiger. <laughs> Trying to find your voice in situations or even those who feel powerless, particularly in unhealthy relationships, because we do have Venus here. So that can mean more arguments, yes, or more likely at this time. I suggest using this time during Mercury retrograde um, to be more reclusive, honestly, just be more reclusive, being more careful with what you say, being more introspective at this time going hermit mode. <laughs> it's a great time to do that. If it can be helped, of course, you know, we have daily lives to live, of course. Uh, it's more of a good time for planning rather than uh, taking any hasty action. After the Mercury retrograde period is over, then you can kind of make your judgment call here. Mm -hmm. So I also feel relationships will either be elevated or escalated depending on the grounds that you stand on, okay? The Regulus energy comes in to kind of poke at your inner lion. <laughs> so reflect on how you honor yourself during this time and finding your own inner power here. Caitlin, uh, you were gonna talk about your definition, your very beautiful definition of a starseed and the Regulus energies. Yeah, that came about last month um, when we did our last video and my guides had given me, uh, I feel a really powerful star seed definition. Um, we are all star seeds, uh, but I feel this gives it a little bit more of a uh, defining how we are a star seed. Let's put it that way. So Starseed is a highly evolved light body astral being with many multidimensional soul aspects, experiencing many incarnations in other higher vibrational dimensions and densities. Through living in many fixed star connections, a Starseed becomes awake and aware that they are a seed of source, willing to plant their soul star aspects into a dense 
and formed incarnation as a third dimensional human being to explore their earthly love body. So it's pretty intense definition, uh, but I'm going to now talk about uh, Regulus a little bit more deeply. Uh, Adriana shared, but I'm going to go to a little bit more of its history, which is kind of fascinating. And then I'm going to get into the Regulan star seed themselves. And, you know, you may have that in your chart. Um, it would be interesting to be able to find that out. And we'll tell you how you can do that later. The fixed star Regulus, again, is one of the four royal stars. And it's at center stage right now and is in the beams of the sun from late July, disappearing in the evening sky until early September, when it will return to visibility in the dawn sky and will actually reach a Kazemi, which means an exact conjunction with the sun. And this will happen around August 22nd and 23rd, somewhere in there. Um, so as I researched about Regulus, I found out that it had moved from the seasonal sign of Leo through an entire age of 2,160 years, which culminated in November of 2011. Now, for those of you that have been around in metaphysics for a while, you may remember November 2011 was the harmonic concordance, and it was a very special time. Um, and uh, around November 11th, 2011 was very powerful. Um, and it has been in the seasonal sign of Virgo, starting another 2,160 years um, for each age. So here we are, we're in the beginnings. It started in 2011. So we're just barely in it. I mean, 2,160 years, it's hard <laughs> to conceive of it. So what does this mean? I, I pulled up Wikipedia. It is the approximate 2,160 years for each age, which corresponds to the average time it takes for the vernal equinox to move from one constellation of the zodiac to the next. So what does this mean? In a nutshell, we moved from a very masculine Leonine Regulus to the beginnings of a strong feminine influence of a what I'm calling Virgoian. I don't know if it's a word, but I'm making it up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Virgoian Regulus. My guides, the piece say we are moving toward the balance of feminine masculine. And this gender balance shows up strongly in Regulan star seeds. So who are the Regulan star seeds? So I have several uh, star seed connections and Regulus. Do you have them, Adriana, as well? Do you have the- I, uh... I believe I had just a couple trines or sextiles okay. scrambled in. Um, okay. Nothing major though. Um, yeah, mine's right in Pluto. It's actually my very mm. first connection. Wow, <laughs> so that's beautiful, okay. Um, Yes. And um, so some of the characteristics of the Regulans um, are first that it's a non-physical realm. I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the realm itself. Um, and it's associated with the ninth dimension. And it carries the energy of the elementals, the fairy-like creatures, the mermaids, the mermen, energies of Lemuria and Atlantis. And not unlike the Pleiadians, they love to play and are helping us to build the new earth. So the Regulan star seeds also carry an energy of being great warriors of nobility, peace, courage, acceptance, healing vibrations as well, and are associated with Archangel Raphael, who is the healer Archangel. And I also see him as the bringer of divine acceptance, which is huge. Um, and many who are Regulan star seeds could be very connected to being an angel in his order. Okay. Um, they, the traits also that come up for many are being like an incarnated angel on earth. And many times people that have this strong trait, uh, people call you an angel or see you as an angel. Um, 
Regulin star seeds are bringers of joy, inner child healing, intuitive magic, and mystical abilities. Uh, they have great shamanic and shape-shifting abilities. So these are just a few of the uh, Regulin starseed traits. And if this sounds like you or someone you know, um, we all have colorful galactic ancestry. And uh, one of the things Adriana and I do as quantum soul guidance practitioners of galactic astrology is we actually can look at your natal chart and help you figure out what starseed connections are most prominent for you. Now, with galactic astrology, we have, through Julia Balaz, a wonderful free galactic astro calculator that you can look up online and actually get some of your starseed connections. As practitioners, we have access to many, many more and are also trained in helping you find, well, which one means something to me? Because when you see these colorful connections and even see your colorful a wheel, it can be kind of like overwhelming. And you're like, well, what does this mean? Well, that's where we come in. We can help uh, decipher that for you. And you can contact us at our emails and you'll find that in our descriptions. I have one more thing before we jump into the signs. This came in from my guides, the P's, um, and it is for all of the signs. Um, and it's basically that during this month, it's going to be, I don't think there's anybody that's going to ride this uh, in a great way, so to speak. <laughs> I mean, we're all going to try. And being that it's Mercury retrograde, the more you focus on your spirituality, the easier the ride it becomes in any Mercury retrograde uh, time. But these are the gemstones that came through and the essences of flowers and, and essential oils that they gave me that's going to help for this Mercury retrograde in our Leo season coming up. And I've never had them give me anything like this. So I took it seriously. So I want to share it with everybody. Um, so the sunflower is the flower essence that they recommend to help to stay balanced during this time. The golden tiger's eye um, placed on your third chakra. So if you do a little bit of Reiki healing and have gemstones, take your tiger's eye and put it on your third chakra. It's a great balancer. Um, and then the best essential oil that they're su suggesting is lemongrass. And it is also a balancer for the third chakra. Um, so I would also suggest doing Reiki on yourself or some kind of touch therapy if you have other abilities. Um, with your third chakra and your sixth chakra combined. With this month coming up, I would suggest the right hand to the sixth chakra and your left on your solar plexus as a great combination of a holding of energy for healing. Um, and then having all those other things going on as well. I'll just add too to that. Um, if anyone feels um, ever so called into honoring uh, Apollo. Apollo reminds me very much of Archangel uh, Raphael, very similar, very healing. So you can, you know, give those offerings and honor Apollo um, if that aligns with your spiritual beliefs, of course, or your mm -hmm. ancestral practices and asking for protection during this time too. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And really cool. Um, didn't know about that um with leo that's really cool how it's shifted <laughs> thousands yeah. of years <laughs> and we're seeing it fascinating we're seeing the feminine for the since 2011 we're seeing the feminine moving forward greatly mm -hmm. and it's only going to be more so yeah we'll talk even more about that too in our next video because mm -hmm. we mm -hmm. see with hydra too that feminine energy yes. coming out again it's Oh, it's yeah. really in full force. <laughs> it is. It is. Yeah. So uh, before we get into the horoscopes, I do want to share a quick oracle message that I actually drew uh, before we started recording. Funny enough, it's um, unrequited love. And this came up in the last video that we did, but it was with my other deck, the past life deck. So it's really interesting that this is coming up again. So yeah. something here needs to be addressed. So from that past, that past video was about the full moon, right? So 
this is just a couple weeks after so there's still some addressing that needs to be had here with some love that the love that could not be received especially with venus coming in mm -hmm. so that message is coming through strongly it says there's not enough attraction or chemistry to keep this relationship going so i mm -hmm. think that's a message for a certain group of you um, or those of you maybe who are giving too much of yourselves to those who are not giving it back. So mm -hmm. think about that. Let that mm -hmm. sit and reflect. Where are you giving too much of yourself where it's not being reciprocated? Whether it's a romantic relationship or any sort of situation or any type of relationship. Work, so, even our jobs, work. Yes, career. absolutely. Yeah, jobs, definitely. So mm -hmm. this message is coming through very strong again. Now we are gonna go and walk you through all 12 signs. So th these will be the horoscopes um, for basically for the new moon, but also for the whole month for Mercury retrograde. So it's kind of enmeshing both those things together. Please do check your sun, moon and rising sign. Check all three to see um, if they all resonate for you, or maybe one might resonate more. And you can come back to this video after and see how you feel after a few weeks have passed since the time of this. So I think I'm starting it off with Aries. So Aries, sun, moon, and rising signs. The regulus energy during uh, this new moon and Mercury retrograde will be affecting your daily routines and perhaps even your health. So Aries, you guys have to take extra care to have time out to de-stress as this can affect your nervous system here. You might also feel you aren't able to communicate as best as you normally would, um, even whether it's vocally or through email or through writing. You might find yourself having some issues with that that you battle with during Mercury retrograde. Uh, you can even develop maybe some issues with the throat. So if that's the case, I recommend drinking some soothing herbal teas with honey um, and just taking some time to even work on your throat chakra if you can, like listening to music that helps with healing the throat chakra. Um, journaling your thoughts can help ease your mind and planning your days out can bring more structure for you if you guys feel like you're struggling a little bit in your day-to-day -day routines. Taurus. Okay, again, you're the sun risings and moons. Um, you're going to be feeling the influence of the fifth house of creativity and romance. And be prepared to slow down a bit during this Mercury retrograde. Take time to formulate your plans. Think things through before you run for the red flag dangled in front of you. You may feel some challenges with many planetary squares impacting you with Uranus and Taurus. The best thing to do is speak your truth. And usually you're good at that. Um, and your ruler Venus does want to heal but feels a bit strangled by her Virgo alignment. Okay, so we remember that Venus and Virgo going on. The Regulans are teachers of acceptance. So accept that things may be perfectly imperfect right now. Take a step back and review all of your decisions, especially romantic ones. Look before you leap to avoid disappointment or a love affair gone bad. And regarding any investments right now, better to investigate them thoroughly before signing any documents. So the best thing is to focus on your creative ideas and nurturing your spirituality, which may be flowing into your awareness when you choose to slow down and smell the roses. Make time to meditate and creatively visualize your ideas, journaling them to bring forward after Mercury leaves his shadow on September 11th. So Gemini's, Gemini sun, moon, and risings, the regulus energy during this new moon with Mercury retrograde will be affecting your relationships with your family and with your home. Be mindful, Gemini's, of miscommunications, of course, with Mercury retrograde, that happens a lot, 
and how you speak with your family. If you share a home with a partner, because remember we do have that Venus going on too with Mercury, uh, be also careful. Uh, oh, I lost my place. Oh yes, be careful of disagreements or arguments that can basically disrupt the peace in your home or in your family. Um, ask for protection during the new moon of your home life and family. Um, maybe if you feel inclined to pray um, or whoever you may um, honor or seek out that protection, you can ask for protection of your home, maybe through Archangel Raphael even. Mm -hmm. Creating that safe space and sanctuary that your home should be to ride out the Mercury retrograde energies. Okay, Cancer. Um, again, sun, moons, and risings. Third, third house influence on communication. So dear Cancer, there's no doubt this has been a challenging year. And the regular energies as great warriors of peace may help you to surrender to the discomfort you may feel as you wait for the healing to come or your projects to come to fruition. It's important to communicate how you are feeling since cancer, your ruler, is the moon. And as the moon is going through this, its conjunctions, squares, oppositions, sextiles, and trines in August, it is best to just ride the waves and not fight the currents. You may feel your attention move towards your home this month. And again, the peacefulness, surrender, and acceptance of the regulant energies will bode you well. Flow like water this month. And remember, communication is key, especially at the beginning of August. Okay. So Leo, suns, moons, and rising signs, the regulus energy during this new moon and of Mercury retrograde will be affecting your finances as well as your relationships. So <laughs> happy birthday, Leos. <laughs> Unlike <laughs> your usual nature where you may feel ready to go out and be in the spotlight, especially with your birthday, the planets are guiding you to tread lightly and maybe even take more cat naps at home <laughs> as you may be more prone to money issues at this time. So do be careful of overspending and utilize the mercury energy to create a budget. You could also have some relationship challenges during this time, of course, um, as this is in your second house and we have the alignment with Venus next to Mercury here with this impacting it, especially the beginning of the month. So be mindful of those miscommunications that can occur. Lay low as best as you can, Leos, uh, but stand up for yourself if the situation with someone calls for it. If it, you know, if it gets to that point where you absolutely need to tap into your inner lion, then so be <laughs> it. <laughs> um, I also feel too, I got this visual, maybe it's because I know a couple of different Leos <laughs> getting recharged in the sunshine. <laughs> so mm -hmm. going maybe by water, or by a beach or just outside and soaking up some sunshine to get recharged and feeling good. Sounds wonderful. <laughs> <laughs> so Virgo, we've come to you, dear. Oh boy. Uh, suns, risings, and moons. I have a Virgo moon. Uh, first house influence. So this is our physical self and our self-identity. Okay, so Virgo, the honest truth is, you may feel this month of August the most. Um, and I'm I'm already feeling it, and it's still July. <laughs> so we haven't even made it there yet. So there may be a lot of head versus your heart stuff going on. I want you to really think about that, letting the mental body override uh, your heart and emotional body. So I consulted my guides for this one. And they say emphatically to use all of your spiritual tools this month, daily meditation, Reiki, Qigong, Tai Chi, yoga, and most important, walks in nature, immersing your physical self. The regular star seed alignment um, will be very helpful in helping you tune into your shamanic and shape-shifting abilities. Virgos, you know you love to plan. Well, plan to have no plan. 
The piece say that this is the best way to move through Leo season and this Mercury retrograde impacting your sign. Stay in the present moment. A great way to do this is through mantra. One of my favorite mantras is from my divine guru, Prahamahansa Yogananda. And the English version goes like this. <clears throat> Let me clear my throat and I'll try to sing it. <clears throat> Spirit and nature dancing together. Spirit and nature dancing together. Victory to spirit and victory to nature. Victory Victory to spirit and victory to nature. So Virgo, it's all about surrendering to the present moment, especially August 19th, as you move through Leo season. And when you finally reach Virgo season on August 23rd, you may realize how much you have learned this month. Okay, okay so Libras, sun, moons, and risings. The Regulus energy during this new moon and continuing through the month with the Mercury retrograde will be calling you to get more rest. Perhaps the business of the summer months has deprived you of some much needed rest, Libras. It's time to take it easier on yourself and catch up on that extra sleep. Rest and recover, Libras. This is also a great time for you to get connected with your spirituality. If you feel a connection to Archangel Raphael, this is also a good time to pray and ask for his protection with the Regulus alignment. If you are in a relationship, this can be a good time for you both to take things easy and spend some quality time inside or in a peaceful place in nature. This can actually help with avoiding arguments and misunderstandings during Mercury retrograde when you take a more laid back approach to your relationship this month. So catch up on your beauty sleep, Libras, and connect with yourself, your angels and ancestors, and know you are divinely protected. Okay. Scorpio, suns, risings, and moons, your 11th house is going to be influenced. So that's community for you. So Scorpio, you know it's love or hate with you sometimes. So be aware of your polar tendencies more than ever this month and make staying centered your main focus for this month of August in Leo season. The Regulan star seed alignment may bring in the healing vibrations for your inner child who may feel with the 11th house community influence either left out or too involved. Could go one way or the other. So become aware of your extreme tendencies and take care of your inner child by staying centered with healing vibrational tools, such as uh, sound frequencies, I think are excellent. Um, 528 Hertz is the love frequency. So I would suggest Scorpio to listen to this often this month. I think it will really help you stay more balanced. Uh, my North Node is in Scorpio, so I'm speaking to myself as well. <laughs> so dear Scorpio, the goal is to become aware of the median line of energy where yin and yang share their energy. So we call this unity. If we can wave more gently, slightly above than slightly below, uh, we're in a more centered state of being. So call upon your regular sisters and brothers energy to help you find the courage to change what you can and the wisdom to let go when it's time to let go. Of course, with a little friends from with a little help from your friends and community. <laughs> hey, Sagittarius, suns, moons, and rising signs. The regulus energy during this new moon with Mercury retrograde the rest of the month will be affecting your work and career. Take extra care of miscommunications. Of course, with Mercury retrograde brings those miscommunications, unfortunately, in the workplace. <laughs> even mm -hmm. technology issues can happen, mm. even more so. <laughs> mm. Use this time productively to plan rather than taking any immediate action with things and not signing any long-term contracts. Uh, keep in mind your work colleagues may be feeling the Mercury retrograde energies without even realizing it. So there can be some tension between people, especially if not seeing eye to eye. 
My advice is to keep your head down and stay focused on the task at hand and getting organized. Mm -hmm. Wow. Okay. Capricorn, suns, risings, and moons, ninth house influences of higher learning and spiritual growth. So Capricorn, gosh, I wish I could say this month will be easier than the last two. <laughs> Adrian, I have Capricorn suns. But with your ruling planet Saturn in retrograde in Pisces, along with Mars and Jupiter squaring and Venus opposing, yikes, August might be a good time for a staycation or shorter trips versus expensive travels overseas due to the intensity of this Mercury retrograde. It is also not the best time to buy or sell real estate. Now, looking for properties is fine. Viewing and reviewing versus buying and selling. Um, and if possible, always be possible. We know there's times where it's not, but it's possible to wait until after September 11th, which will be the end of the post-shadow period of Mercury. So here is some good news. Yay! The regular star alignment could bring some magical and mystical energies. Also with Saturn retrograde in Pisces, um, you could make some time for fantasy and fun. Maybe go to Cedar Point or somewhere <laughs> to a, a, a <laughs> fantasy park somewhere, Disneyland or something. But during most of August, due to the Mercury retrograde, starting off in Virgo, your sister sign, it's not a good time, Capricorn, to be on a big mission. So bring your focus to spiritual development and evolution. So walks in nature. And how about just resting more? Oh, there's a, there's a thought. Resting more and giving yourself time to integrate all you have learned during your June and July full moons. Yeah, that sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Okay, Aquarius. Aquarius, suns, moons, and rising signs. The regulus energy during this new moon with Mercury, Mer oh my gosh, Mercury retrograde. It's already starting. Will be affecting you on a deep level in the eighth house here. Take extra care of your mental health at this time, Aquas. This is a great time for introspection, but taking it easy on yourself. If you are in a relationship, you may be struggling to connect on a physical level, actually intimately, I was picking up on too. Try to have open conversation on this if that's the case, but it would be best to do so, I feel, after Mercury retrograde so wounds aren't triggered and to avoid more misunderstandings. You so have some grace on yourself and with your partner at this time. Sometimes doing nothing is the best thing you can do for the time being, honestly. It's sometimes that's the best thing to do. Reflect on how you're feeling, maybe even through journaling. Then make any important decisions or judgment calls, um, especially when it comes to relationships after mm -hmm. this month mm -hmm. and probably after that post shadow which will end on the 11th of September. Mm -hmm. So take it easy on yourself, Aquas. <laughs> <laughs> Good advice. Okay, we come to you, Pisces. Suns, risings, and moons. Seventh house influences on relationships and partnerships. So Pisces, you have Saturn and Neptune in your signs, both in retrograde. Plus Mars and Jupiter are squaring Saturn while Venus opposes Saturn. So you may feel this Mercury retrograde in your areas of obligations while gritting your teeth, moving through the I have to do this energies during August. Good news, the Regulans are here to come to your rescue and whisk you away on a fantastical journey of divine acceptance through accepting what is in the moment and becoming what the moment calls for. So how about making your responsibilities more fun? Is there a way to change your attitude from the I have to do this martyred pattern to the I choose to do this because I see the love there and it's always about the love. Yeah, that's something we have to remember this month. Um, 
for all 12 signs is to choose love. To me, love, the acronym is light on verifiable experience. So what is real in the moment? What is present? What is really happening? If we stay there and use all these spiritual tools, everything that Adriana Anna, and I have shared this whole video, I think we will see a huge and, and beautiful month. You know, it could be beautiful. Pluto is going to be uh, in Aquarius and con conjuncting at a 0 0.09 Lyra, and it's a Ladfar, and it's going to be going on for a long time. So we will talk more about that in our next video, but I just wanted to just kind of honor Lionsgate since Lion is the theme of our video <laughs> for sure. Do look out for our next video, which will be coming soon around the time of the full moon. Thank you all so much for tuning in again. Please do like and comment down below if anything resonated. We love to hear from you and we will see you soon. Take good Namaste. care.